So this is just a little um, thing I've been experimenting with. I just started it last week, and I thought it'd be sort of a neat thing if I could get it working in time for this conference that I could maybe talk to some people about it. So I've been experimenting with Hugo, which is a uh, popular uh, static website generator framework. Uh, it's written in Go, so static website generators um, they let you write your blog in Markdown files, a simple text format on your uh, local computer. You run the static site generator, it generates your HTML and your CSS, then you just upload it somewhere with that does static hosting, such as GitHub pages or service like Netlify or even just like Amazon S3 works fine. So it's a really pop, it's becoming more popular. It's still lots of people use WordPress, which requires you to install a database and things, but um, I'll move, move my mouse so in time out. Um, and uh, that's great, it works, but you have to install tools on your desktop in order to blog with sort of this sort of thing. Um, but I want to do it in the browser because I want to hook it into things like IPFS and DAT and allow people to just use their web browser. I want people to be able to make a blog from their phone, a decentralized blog. So uh, enter WebAssembly, which is built into all the popular web browsers now. That is a system which lets you compile like C, C programs, programs that are never designed to run on the web into sort of like a virtual machine format that now runs in all the web browsers. Um, and Hugo uh, is written in a language called Go. And Go has, is a language written by Google, and they've been adding WebAssembly support natively into Go. So you can just tell Go, instead of compiling to your Linux or OS X or Windows, uh, just compile it to WebAssembly. Um, so um, I've done that. So I've taken the Hugo thing, and I had to chop out a lot of parts that, it, that required certain libraries, and I wanted to get the, the, the size of it smaller, because it's designed to run on desktop machines, uh, so that, where size is no limit, but I want it to run in a web browser. So I man managed to chop it down, I got about 25 megabytes, and when it compresses, it's only six megabytes. Um, and, um, and then I hooked it up to, I work at Protocol Labs on IPFS, and I, we have a JavaScript version, and I also hooked that into the browser, so it's sort of a, it's not a full publishing solution, but it does the, the website generation. So, okay, here's the demo. So, if I load this, um, this could be hosted on IPFS uh, or any web page. Um, this is just a static site, and it's just loaded uh, that, that six megabyte uh, WebAssembly file plus some JavaScript in the HTML page, which you see right here. And um, I need to do this command on my local computer um, to get my blog template. So I'm doing this here. So. <laughs> I'm actually cheating. This is actually my computer in Vancouver. But the network's a little slow. Can you, you double paste? Oh. Okay, let me try that again. Hmm, okay. I'll, I'll try to do this locally instead. Okay. Okay, this, this one's actually on my laptop. I just started cheating there, so. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this one, this one in Vancouver worked. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> I 
I just don't have working internet. Okay. Um. <laughs> Try different, try different network. Um, okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, that's better. Okay, I'm gonna delete this whole one. No, I think it, I think we're good now. Okay, there. Okay, here's the blog. Um, and then uh, if I if, so basically, it's just checked out all these like static files. If I go into the content. Oh. Ah, still a little slow. Okay. Uh. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm wrong. different deck. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I have two markdown files. Okay. Um, I'm just going to. Okay, it seems to be faster now. If you go new um, post slash our networks.md. And then, so I'm going to make this not a draft post. Hi from our networks, except I spelt it wrong. OK, so I'm just going to add this one to IPFS. OK, so I get this um, content ID. And I just go back to this web page, plug that in there, and then it's going to download the files. It actually just generated the, the blog right there. You didn't see it because it was only like 300 milliseconds. And then it's uploading it to IPFS. And sort of advertising it to the network now as it's doing it. And then I've got um, two links here, so I can just uh, open these up. And it also says, like, now pin it somewhere, so it's good to go into your pinning service. So here I can just use IPFS cluster. This is really small. And I can just pin that. Actually, it's going to complain. Uh, and you can see it's actually loaded it up here, so our network. So, so um, it loaded it using an IPFS companion, but this actually works on my cell phone. It works from my uh, iPad. So um, yeah, so that's it. So. Great. We have time for two questions, maybe. See one at the front. Okay. Hi, that's really cool, by the way. I, I, I don't know, I've never heard of like um, compiling go into like uh, the web assembly like that and then having it like decentralized software. So that's, that's cool. But um, my question was about like just looking at the hash for the uh, site there. Mm -hmm. I noticed it's like a BA kind of hash and I'm used so, to seeing QM. So I was just wondering what, what that so, is. So um, usually if you use IPFS, you follow the demos, they all start with QM. Um, that's because they're using um, base 50. Um, six encoding and they use more letters, um, but we're switching all over to using base 32 letters because um, the, uh, 
you want to, we want to be able to use these hashes in domain names and DNS names are not case sensitive. So you can't use lowercase a and uppercase a and have them be different things. So it, if you can encode just into 32 characters instead of 56 characters. Um, so when you use base 32 encodings, which will be the default for IPFS going forward, you, they're a little bit longer, just a little bit. Um, but then you can use them in your URLs. And they start with BAFI, B A F Y. So. Thank you. And Mac file systems are Yeah. I see one more over here. And this will work with that too. You just have to use the right libraries. That was exactly it. Like, <laughs> how hard would it be for me to like fork this and replace IPFS with that in hours? Um, <laughs> For you, probably 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's just, um, you know, it's dealing with file systems. So WebAssembly doesn't have a file system, so you have to pair it with an in-browser file system with some little JavaScript magic. Um, so I use one called BrowserFS, and then I just put use the IPFS at the beginning end to download the, the content, and then at the end to publish the content. But you just replace those chunks with that or any other thing. And we'll move on to the next talk.